Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to look today at the substitution method for solving linear equations. Remember, linear equations are just, or a system of linear equations, are just when you have two lines and they cross somewhere. And when they do cross somewhere, we can solve them using a graph like we did in the previous lesson, or we can solve them using this substitution method. Um, this is just one method that you can use to solve them, and I'll explain this method and then kind of tell when we would use them. Substitution method, this is the overall picture. First off, you take your two equations, and you take either one of them and solve for a value of x or y. It doesn't matter which one, solve for the value of x or y, substitute, hence the word substitution, you'll substitute that value in to the second equation for the x or y value. After you do that, you solve, um, you'll get an, a value for x or y, and then you substitute that into both equations and it should match. All right, let's take a look at two equations. And this is a perfect example of when we would use the substitution method. The substitution method is, works best when you have an equation like this and it's already set up for you. What I mean by that is that you already have a variable isolated by itself. y is equal to 3x. Now, what I'm going to do is take that information and substitute it from this first equation into the second one. So I'm going to substitute the value of 3x into the second equation every place I see a y value. So in this case, it will become, instead of 2x minus 4y, it will be 2x minus 4 times 3x is equal to negative 30. And I'll just go ahead and solve negative 4 times 3x gives us negative 12x. I'll join together my x terms there. 2x minus 12x gives me negative 10x. And then I divide both sides by negative 10 so that I know x is equal to 3. Now, what that, that is telling me is when this equation, the first one, is equal to the second one, or the point where they meet, my coordinate of x is 3. So that's useful. Now I'm going to plug the value of x into both of these equations and see if, I, if it matches up. So let's line up both equations and go ahead and solve. Again, x is equal to 3, so my first equation y equals 3 times 3, or in other words, y equals 9. In my second equation, I substitute 2 times 3 minus 4y equals negative 30. 2 times 3 is 6, and I'll subtract 6 from both sides of this equation, and then divide both sides by negative 4, and I see that y is equal to 9. So what that tells me is my solution for this system is 3, negative 9 where x is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 9. That's the place where these two lines cross. Our next question is um, a little bit more challenging in that we don't just have an x equals, but we have an a and b. Changing the letters doesn't change anything. We're just going to make a the x values and b the y values, but we do have that a is equal to b plus 4. It makes it a little bit more complicated because we have to substitute b plus 4 into this equation where we see the letter a. So that'll look like this. Again, I've just substituted 7 times a instead of 7 times b plus 4. I'm going to use the distributive property and multiply 7 times b and 7 times 4 which will give me 7b plus 28. Now I'm going to join together the b values on the left side by subtracting 6b from both sides of the equal sign. I'm going to then subtract 28 from both sides of the equal sign to get my numbers over here on the right. Now b is equal to negative 13. I'll take that value of negative 13 and substitute it into both equations. And I'm doing this on both equations just to double check and make sure my work is right because I should get the same answer. So everywhere I see the letter B, I'm going to substitute the value of negative 13. 6 times negative 13 is negative 78. I add that to 15, which gives me negative 63. When I divide both sides by 7, 
I get the result that a is equal to negative 9. Now I'm going to come over here and again substitute b equals negative 13. So a is equal to negative 13 plus 4 which leaves me with a is equal to negative 9. So the final solution for this system is a is negative 9, b is negative 13. All right, now I've shown you a couple of things here with this um, a substituting for both equations. Because we're substituting into both equations, we can check our work and make sure that it's correct. However, if you're pretty sure of your math, like you'll see in this next example, you don't need to substitute it into both equations. You can just pick one of the equations and solve for that. So let's go ahead and look at this next question here. We're asked to solve the system, this system here, using substitution. Now this one here is one step more complicated than the others because we're not given any equation where x or y is by itself. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation and I'm going to rearrange it or transform it so that I get x by itself. To do that, I subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation times negative 1 so that I get positive x by itself. x is equal to negative, nine, negative y plus 9. All right, so that's what x is equal to. Now I have to substitute that, x equals negative y plus 9, into the other equation, this one, for the value of y. That ends up looking, or for the value of x, so I can solve for the value of y. So it ends up looking like this. 3 times negative y plus 9 plus 2y is equal to 6. I use the distributive property, 3 times negative y is negative 3y, 3 times 9 is 27. I'm going to join together my y terms here, negative 3y plus 2y leaves with negative y. I'm going to now subtract 27 from both sides of the equation and then divide both sides by negative 1. That tells me that my y value is 21. Now, like I said earlier, I could take y equals 21 and substitute it into both equations, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable with substituting right now. I'm going to substitute it into just one of the equations. I'm going to pick this one because it looks less complicated to me. All right? You can substitute it into either equation as we've shown in the previous examples. Both of them should give you the same answer. I just chose this one um, for no particular reason. Um, you can pick either one. So I'm going to substitute y equals 21. It'll look like that. Now I'm going to solve 21 minus 5 is 16. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation and then multiply both sides of the equation times negative 1. That gets rid of the negative x, but it makes 12 into being negative. That'll be my final solution. Again, x is negative 12 and y is positive 21. We could have substituted into this equation and we would have gotten exactly the same answer. So the substitution method is that you first solve for x or y in one of the equations. Then you take that value that you got from the first step and you substitute it into the x or the y position in the second equation. This will give you an actual value for x or y and then you can take that value from x or y and substitute that into x or y on either one of the equations and you'll get your solution.